The Honourable Leader of the New Democratic Party. Thank, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like this morning to table the following nine dictionary definitions of the word lobbying. Webster's, Oxford's, Fowler's, Black's, as well as five other uh, dictionary definitions of the word, not one of which, Mr. Speaker, uh, defines the word lobbying in terms of a request for funds. Uh, that, however, is the definition that the Premier has insisted on as he has contended that he was not, in his view, lobbied by Jean Chrétien. Mr. Speaker, the Premier does not in Nova Scotia get to invent his own language. So I want to ask him, why will he not simply admit that what uh, looks and sounds and smells like lobbying, in fact, has been lobbying and then move to rectify the situation? The Honourable Premier. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank uh, the Honourable Member for his question. Uh, I want to tell him, uh, over the last four and a half years, I have the great fortune. We work in so many, not only Nova Scotians, but people around the world who want to make sure we have the proper investments in our province. It's why, over the last two years, we've seen more young people stay in our province than we had in the last number of decades. It's why we've moved ourselves back into fiscal, fiscal health, Mr. Speaker. It's why we continue to make sure that we make those investments to attract the young people that want to be in this province. We get some young people who are in the audience, to, in the gallery today, who had been here, who had met some of them today very much optimistic about the future in our province, and we're going to continue uh, to make those investments. And, Mr. Speaker, let me be very clear. Anyone who wants to come to this province to continue to drive economic development, I'll be more than happy to meet with them. The Honourable Leader of the New Democratic Party. Mr. Speaker, uh, an open and respect-filled tone is one of the greatest assets a government can have. So it's a serious concern that when the Nova Scotia Chair of the Canadian Federation of Students published recently an opinion piece critical of the government's failure to pass legislation to address sexual violence on campus, that the response of the Minister of Advanced Education it was to cancel scheduled meetings and to suggest that these students would not in future be welcome at meetings in his department. Mr. Speaker, I want to ask the Premier if the Minister of Advanced Education's conduct in this matter is in keeping with his standards of openness and respect. Premier. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank uh, the Honourable Member for the question. I want to tell him, uh, under successive ministers in labour and advanced education, we are now uh, requiring our post-secondary institutions to have a sexual assault strategy in the campus. They're, they're finding that we will go to them, will be contingent on that being in place under the leadership of the uh, minister is continuing to work with our post-secondary education. I also want to draw the honourable member's attention to the work that the minister has been doing with the Graduate Opportunities Program, where we're seeing more young people find their first job in Nova Scotia, working with our private sector, working with our universities, so that we're providing hope for the very young people that he's referring to, Mr. Speaker. And I'm optimistic, and I'm optimistic, like many, many young people are in this province, that they finally can see themselves building a future, an economic future in this province, Mr. Speaker, one that they can help raise their family and build on their own dreams and hopes. The Honourable Leader of the New Democratic Party. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Earlier this week, the Premier derisively characterized those whose opinions differ from his or, or from the opinions of his government as the word he used was noise. Now, I don't think I'm alone in finding this uh, a troubling sign, and not the first troubling sign, of a government that is performing inadequately when it comes to openness and respect and listening. Mr. Speaker, I want to ask the Premier, what kind of leadership does he think he's providing when he dismisses views other than his own as noise? The Honourable Premier. Uh, Mr. Speaker, again, I want to thank the Honourable Member for the question. I want to remind the Honourable Member, Mr. Speaker, that uh, under our government's leadership, Mr. Speaker, uh, Executive Council members' expenses are all online. Nova Scotians can view them and look at them. We continue to make sure, make ourselves accountable, Mr. Speaker. I hear some, I hear some conversation, Mr. Speaker. Not to be getting upset from the other side, Mr. Speaker. The fact of the matter is, fact of the matter is, Mr. Speaker, it was this Executive Council, Mr. Speaker, that actually ensured that Nova Scotians have access to their expenses online in a timely fashion. Not only ours, but those of the executive team. I want to remind the honourable member, Mr. Speaker, that under this leadership. We performed and we've just tabled our third consecutive balanced budget. I want to remind the honourable member under, the, under this leadership what we've done is continue to work with Nova Scotia so that young people see a future for themselves in Nova Scotia. And we're going to continue to make sure, Mr. Speaker, that we move this province forward in a positive, optimistic way, like many Nova Scotians see us.